Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar, developer of the Integrative Movement System. Welcome to this edition of Facebook Live for the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for letting us be part of your journey in helping your clients accomplish their health and fitness goals. Because ultimately, what we're all trying to do with our clients is help them achieve their individual health and fitness goals. Now, many of our clients present to us with low back tightness, discomfort, and osteoarthritic changes of their spine. And we often get told, or they get told, that it's their genetics, it's old age, um, it's because their mother had it. But what does it really come down to? Why do our clients experience chronic tightness, discomfort, and or osteoarthritic changes? And what muscles most involved in that process? It really comes down to one thing. And this is what we teach as part of all our programs, our Integrative Movement Specialist Program, as well as our Integrative Corrective Exercise Instructor Program. And that comes down to our clients' habits. It's their non-optimal and inefficient posture and movement habits that they've all created, that we've all created around our injuries, surgeries, traumas, around things we've learned about posture or movement, around sports we may have played, or our inactive lifestyle, or just living in everyday life where now we're just stuck on cell phones and in front of our computers. We create these non-optimal and inefficient patterns. So it's not just that they're non-optimal, they're also inefficient. We're using muscles too much, certain muscles too much. Other muscles we're not using enough. So it creates wear and tear upon our joints because of the years, sometimes it's months, but generally it's years, year after year of using these non-optimal and inefficient strategies. And then we developed this condition called osteoarthritis. But it all started out with these non-optimal and inefficient strategies, and low back tightness is often one of the first signs, for example, around the spine, that starts to tell us that we're using a non-optimal or inefficient strategy. So what's the most important muscle when it comes to low back tightness? Oftentimes we hear, oh, it's a psoas. Everybody's got a psoas tightness. And I wrote a whole book about the psoas and the psoas solution. And I discuss how the psoas is part of the deep myofascial system. And what we mean by that are those muscles that attach directly to the joints that are deep in our body. Muscles like the psoas, transversus abdominis, multifidi, pelvic floor, the deep hip rotators, the, the deeper glutes. These are all muscles that attach deep in our body and attach directly to the joints. And their job is to send proprioceptive signals back to the nervous system about joint position, joint load, joint movement, and then create stability. They preactivate or contract before the superficial muscles to stabilize the joint. So what's the most important muscle when we start talking about low back tightness? There's not one, but one of the most important muscles is the diaphragm. The diaphragm sits and surrounds our rib cage from the front all the way to the back. It's a dome-shaped muscle. It fascially blends in with the psoas, the transversus abdominis, as well as the multifidi. And what we find is that when our clients are better able to activate their diaphragm and do three-dimensional breathing, they're able to reduce chronic low back tightness and oftentimes discomfort and then start to change, not change or reverse, but start to stop the progression of the osteoarthritic changes of their spine. And here's the most important component about breathing. Because we all learn that diaphragmatic breathing is belly breathing, and it's not. Diaphragmatic breathing is using the entire diaphragm so the whole entire rib cage opens up top to bottom, side to side, as well as front to back. Belly breathing is just that. It's just belly breathing. And that's really only using the anterior portion of the diaphragm. So what we need to do is get our clients to breathe more into their back, the posterior aspect of the diaphragm, where it inserts into the psoas, which then goes down and inserts into the pelvic floor. So the diaphragm and pelvic floor work together. But we really want to get that posterior aspect of the diaphragm more active in the breathing process, because that's where the majority of our clients that experience low back tightness, discomfort, and tightness I should say osteoarthritic changes, that's where they struggle to get their breath. Here's how you do it. Just have them simply put their hands on their ribcage, put their thumbs in the back. And what we want them to do with the thumb in the back is as they breathe in, feel as if they're sending their breath back that direction. We actually want them to have less belly breathing and more posterior breathing. So yes, they should expand anteriorly and to the side, but they need to breathe back posterior to get that posterior aspect of the diaphragm where the transverse abdominis comes back there, where the psoas blends in there. We need that active because we found that when our clients better activate that posterior aspect of their diaphragm, they get better psoas activation. They get better transverse abdominis activation. They're able to better utilize the pelvic floor in the breathing process as well. And that's a super effective strategy for helping our clients 
address their low back tightness, many times their discomfort, and help them with osteoarthritic changes of their spine. So on Thursday, in part two of this series, I'm going to come back and show you how to integrate breathing into the fundamental movement patterns that your clients ultimately need to do, because what we're doing is working you through the integrated movement system, and we, will, we need to integrate the concepts of breathing from corrective exercise into the fundamental movement patterns that our clients ultimately need to do to achieve their health and fitness goals in a safe and effective manner. So thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day, and I'll see you Thursday on Facebook Live. Take care.